and it's a 5.9 Cummins nozzle assembly. Now, what are you looking at here? When pressure. You're That's the pressure. Right. But what what are you looking for though? When you when you see a, a it's got a spec. Right? It would have a spec in this. Oh, we'll look here in a minute. Okay. But the spec is written right on here. It's written in bar. You know, metric. Right. Sorry, I just had cataract replaced. Yes, it is. I never have cataracts now. Better than surgery done. Yeah. Can you read what the bar says? Let's see. 275? Yeah, 275 bar. That's what this is. Well, okay. it's a new one, so it's probably going to pop off a 280. Okay. And this is somewhat similar. Let's see, it's low on pressure. We're, we're, and really, you can't hardly find what you want that spring inside. Yeah. Well, Maybe. for right now. Right. For the first, for a first part of the demonstration, this is an injector that's reached the end of its service life. It's not analyzing correctly, and it would smoke. Right. The soot off. Soot. Yeah. And clog up the DPF and quicker. run run a little rough. Okay. But well, this is off a of five nine. But if you had a DPF and the EGR system, oh yeah, you're already polluting it. It's it's already starting to flood. Okay. And that was an injector that failed. We actually come in with a failed injector. That caused this problem? Yeah, yes. So, so what are we looking at, guys? It had a thermal it's event. 5.9 Cummins. 5.9 And at some point in time, it probably got hot. And it dropped this seat off of this valve. And you can see where it crunched it over here. Broke it up into little pieces. And the rest of it's history. Now, how did the bad injector cause that? Because it over it overfuels it. Over now, does it overfuel the whole cylinder, or is it spotting it? Is it focusing? No, it's focusing in the bowl because it's not atomizing. Right. So I've got a piston up front. We'll show you too. Okay. Pud puddling issues and and stuff like that, and, and and plus not knowing any of the prior history of it. You know, somebody had been in there. It had a O'Reilly's reman injector not in that hole, but somebody had been underneath that cover before. Okay. So let me get this right. The injector wears, you get more fuel going in. Right. Okay. So me as a guy, I'm thinking, okay, that's great. I get more fuel, I get more power. But you're losing atomization and you have more of that garden hose effect. That. So then and you're creating a thermal event in one cylinder. It's not all cylinders. Right. And but, something else is the, the timing, the, the uh, timing of the event right. changes. So then you're, you're retarding the timing. The duration the, of the injection. The, the duration. But then you're also, instead of that heat being distributed throughout the fine atomization, you basically have a blowtorch exactly. focusing on you know, a magnifying glass burning that amp. Yes. Is that what we're looking at? Yes. Well, do you know, do you, do you know why diesel solenoids, the, the, the original, original, before common rail, do you know why there was some One fire? The flame front breaks the sound. Barrier. When that explosion happens, it happens so fast that it breaks the sound. Barrier. It's moving fast and the speed of sound. That's why there's a noise. Common rail come in, they were trying to get rid of NOx, oxide okay. and nitrogen. So they put a pilot injection yes. in, and it's so minute, the flame front doesn't pass, surpass that speed of the sound. Okay, because I thought the reason they're quieting down because you're not putting one dose of fuel in there, you're pressing because five. Because initial injection, that pre injection, is so minute. And it gets the flame started across the top of the piston. It gets it started to reduce NOx, of oxide to nitrogen. And you are correct about the five events because they are up to that now. Right. But that is more refining of the noise level of the engine, more refining of the NOx creation. And and what they've learned is they that they create a solution. And that okay. also, yes. 
And so when when you're injecting, you're looking at that minute, Very that, that minute of fuel, that precise of injection, that's where air just screws it all up. Exactly, yes. it goes south in a hurry. 11 through 16 Duramax is the worst one of the bunch because the pilot injection is almost not measurable by the bench. So a lot of times what we will get a good injector not show a pilot injection number and, and that test is not what we're after usually when we're testing those injectors anyway. We're looking at full That's a common full threat. Part load. So we're looking at the pilot injection being very important. Yes. Okay, so then if you have air in that pilot injection, air is not everywhere. It's not in every it injection. That. It, yes. it tends to go up. Okay. And plus you're slamming the panel too, just all right. back to the original. That's where there's no cushion, there's no there, hydraulic that's cushion. What, that's what Caterpillar talks about, guys, is when you don't have the hydraulic cushion, they, the punch comes down and it smacks on it instead of it. I call it a shock absorber. Yes. Okay. It's a it hydraulic shock absorber. Yeah. I call it a shock absorber. So it, this is a fuel injection shop confirming and educating not only you guys out there, but me that I've been in swamped in this, but you're educating me more and more. Every, every minute we speak, it seems like you bring us something new up. We get to explain it to the customer all the time. Well, why did this happen? And then when this is not firing right, what's going at your exhaust is all changed. Yes. And then if you have filters in your exhaust, yes. Uh, and you have filters, uh, coolers, and your uh, your EGR, then those be plug quicker. So that's where the fast helps you out on both of those. Not only with the injector life, horsepower and fuel mileage, but then we have the uh, fast EGR filter helping you out there. So we have, we have a lot of answers to making that diesel engine last like it's designed to last. Absolutely. Customer says, no, I'm gonna get them off the internet. I can get them a lot cheaper off the internet. So he did, he got them out of Florida. You get what you pay for, right? He, he got them out of Florida, 5,000 miles later, comes back in and says, my truck's missing. So customer yanked ahead and saw this. Okay. And so he says to me, he says, Mark, I think it's an injector. Would you test the injectors for me? I think we need to test the injectors. After 5,000 miles? After 5,000 miles, okay. he did this to, to the piston. See how it Gold and stuck, stuck the rings up here. The top rings actually stuck it, and yes. melted it. Actually melted it down to the to the ring. That's where we're spraying the fuel into, right into here. Right. You can't even hardly see the pattern of it because the injector was bad. It overfueled that cylinder. So he says, "Would you test the injectors for me?" I said, "Let's take it one more step further." You've already told me it was cylinder four or six. I don't remember what it was. This is enough years ago, but I think it was four or six. I says, "You've told me what cylinder it is." So now. You label the pistons A, B, C, D, E, and F, so I can't tell what cylinder it is. He says, grand idea. I sent me the injectors, we tested them. We found one, this one was 20% overfueled. We found another was 10% overfueled. And I told him, I says, we found another problem. We found two injectors bad, not one, two. We've got one that's 10% overfueled, and he starts laughing. I timed the letter, and I can't remember what it was now. But he starts laughing. I didn't know at the time. He says, I didn't know at the time because I just yanked the head off and this piston was melted. I didn't know it scored the cylinder wall on another cylinder. He says, you just nailed one second test. That cylinder was 10% over fuel. This one was 20% over fuel with only 5,000 miles okay. on a set of internet injectors because they were cheaper. I want to ask your opinion on something. You know, on the higher horse engines, and you talk about you know piston going up and down, and in some cases that piston will get cocked sideways and lock up. You ever seen that? Because of too much clearance or too tight. Or, or what if your injector is putting too much fuel on one side? It can do that. It can do that. I was just wondering about that. I never thought about it that way. As we showed you, the, the, the no, that nozzle, what, it was actually thrusting more on one side than the other, holding right. the plug. So, with that pressure not being evenly distributed around the piston, that's what that's what my thinking is that you cock that piston sideways from pressure. You just Got me to thinking. I never thought of it that way, but that would be true. And then you have this galling on one side. Yep. More burning. Yes. Yes. 
Just wanted to confirm that was someone that would this know. This was thermal overload and just you know, the piston, the head of the piston swelled, started okay. melting components. Well, Mark, thank you Did again help for you? your time. Yes, thank oh. you. Yeah, I'll be coming back with more questions after I digest all this.